Welcome back to my channel. Today is St George's Day, and as a proud Englishman, I will celebrate that. And I'd like to wish everybody a happy St George's Day. Be proud of where you're from. And there you'll notice is the English flag, St George's Cross. In order to show you just how old and how important this building is right here, long, long before the Vikings landed on the shores of England. That's right, the shores of England, they didn't, in this story, they didn't land on the shores of Scotland, Wales or Northern Ireland. And today, it's St George's Day. It's the patron saint of England. There was none of this UK nonsense. Anyway, there was a fortified building here on this hill long before the Vikings first arrived on these shores. And in fact, you can see right there, Holy Island, where they arrived. They arrived there and they raped, pillaged and murdered everything in their sight. The Lindisfarne Priory was decimated. They were the monks who wrote one of the first ever books, the, what's it called, the Lindisfarne Diaries, I think. And then they came here to Bebenburg, or as we know it, Bambra Castle. Ah, Bebenburg, I presume. And this site was originally the location of a Celtic Britonic fort known as Dingari, and may have been the capital of the kingdom of Bernicia from its foundation in the year 420. <laughs> that was a good year. That's where the Vikings came from, from over there. If we go around here, we should get a view of Holy Island soon as well, but here we are at Bambra Castle. In around about 547, it was captured by King Ida of Bernicia. And after passing between the Britons and Anglo-Saxons three times, the fort came under Anglo-Saxon rule in 590. Circa 600, Husa's successor, Elfarif, passed it on to his wife, Beba, who from the early name Bebenbur was derived. Or Bebenburg. It was about 400 years later when the Vikings turned up and they absolutely destroyed this place in 993. So later the Normans built a Newcastle on the site, which forms the core of this present one. And after a revolt in 1095, supported by the castle's owner, it became the property of the English monarch. And we're in. £17 to get in. £34, 40, 51 pounds altogether. That's not too bad. About 2,000 baht. Let's have a little look at the view, shall we? About nine miles or 14 kilometers to the south on a point of coastal land is the ancient fortress of Dunstanborough Castle. And about five miles or eight kilometers to the north is Lindisfarne Castle on Holy Island. Inland, about 16 miles or 26 kilometers to the south is Annick Castle, the home of the Duke of Northumberland. Babenberg. If you've seen The Last Kingdom on Netflix, you'll know what I mean. And there's Holy Island over there. A tidal island. First episode of the Vikings, they invaded that island. Linda's Farm, AKA Holy Island. In the 17th century, financial difficulties led to the castle deteriorating quite a lot, but it was restored by various owners during the 18th and 19th centuries. And it was finally bought by the Victorian era industrialist, William Armstrong one of the richest guys in the whole world at the time. Quite a guy, let me tell you, but that's, that's another story. It would take me a whole video to tell you all about the legend that is William Armstrong. And he completed its restoration into what you can see today. And the castle still belongs to the Armstrong family. And as you can see here, it's open to the public, isn't it? The great thing about the National Trust and I can't remember the other one, English Heritage. Always upkeeping these old and wonderful places. It's the 2nd of January today and a lot of people will be extending their holidays, I'd imagine, but 
certainly by the looks of it, look. Start up there, look. Ruins on that island as well. It's Linda's farm, Holy Island. It's the windmill. Is Ufrid there? Heavenback's mine! I'll have to come back later. Imagine waiting here for the Vikings to move on from Holy Island and all them long boats out there. Truly terrifying. So the name Bambra comes from Bebenberg. This section of the castle is perhaps the most interesting for me. Um, I perhaps should have been an archaeologist, but archaeological excavations started here in about 1960 by a guy called Brian Hope Taylor, and he discovered a gold plaque here known as the Bambra Beast, as well as as well as something called the Bambra Sword, and this always amuses me somewhat. So the Bambra Sword is an Anglo-Saxon artifact from the seventh century, um, and it was uncovered in 1960. The sword went missing until Brian's death in 2001, whereupon it was found in a suitcase <laughs> in his garage. It is pretty unique amongst swords of its period, having been formed by six strands of iron pattern welded into a blade, but a blade, resulting in speculation that it may well have been the sword of a king. The Bambra sword has got a pattern welded blade, which historians have identified by x-rays as being unique to the time period in that it uses six strands of iron to form the sword when no other blades of that era were made of more than four strands. Now, it would have taken a blacksmith about two months to create this blade. And there's a couple of archeologists that have come out and pretty much said that to produce a weapon of this caliber required state-of-the-art technology of the time. And those who witnessed the creation of this weapon would have thought it the equivalent of magic. My princess is just happy to finally get into Bambra, she really is. Take them out of Thailand, all they want to do is Instagram photos. Oh ho! Oh ho! Cricket green down here, quintessentially English village. A couple of pubs and dirty great big castle. smorgasbord for the senses just look at some of those properties as well some people buy things in the city center but look at that if you live there you're never going to get tired of this view surely and there you'll notice is the english flag saint george's cross we're about to go into the old laundry rooms of the castle which is now the Armstrong and Aviation Artifacts Museum and it's got art uh, exhibits about William Armstrong like I said he was an, a Victorian industrialist one of the richest guys in Europe if not the world and his manufacturing company Armstrong Whitworth so there's going to be engines artillery weaponry uh, and pieces for planes and aviation artifacts from two world wars some of the old machinery there's a dynamo look Wow, about that big now. Lord Armstrong. 
look at this. The shipbuilding company built all these ships. Look. That's pretty incredible. Look at all that. So among many other businesses, he had the shipbuilding business as well. Okay, look. Built all these ships. Wow, very cool. Okay, so they built engines and everything for aeroplanes as well, like shipbuilding, aeroplane building, car building. Look at that. Just different bombs and stuff they found on the beach nearby. Look. Wow. Wow, that's from a Hurricane cockpit. 1941. Wow. That's pretty mad. Look at this. And then the Armstrong factory, the Vickers Armstrong, that built all that too. Like everywhere, we've got a real memorial to World War One. The actual wheels of a, the tyres and wheels of a Spitfire. These are from a Messerschmitt. This is all the excess stones and stuff from things that have collapsed and things that need fixing and how many years has that been there? Three thousand years. Are you sure? I don't know. <laughs> Actually stay in that clock tower over there and I did hear a story somewhere that was a Newcastle player who lived in Bamborough Castle. For some reason I think that was Joey Barton. I must check that out. If you do know, leave a comment down below. Thank you very much. And there's another one, that's so you can stay in the clock tower. You can stay in Neville Tower as well. Handpicked holiday home. Stocks for punishment to be erected in a convenient place in Bamburgh for these are So that's where the stocks were I couldn't resist being able to dig up all this look Still an archaeological wonder I think Oh look, what a small one. I don't know if you can make that out. Bamburgh Castle, 1772. That'll be the same roller they use for the cricket ground of the same type, anyway. 
these beautiful old windows. Absolutely beautiful. Walking into the old chapel. It was the Lord Armstrong I, Lord Armstrong, 1810 to 1900. Eighteen forty four, the trustees of this place. Again, loads of coins for good luck. What a wonderful spot! And we're going to go into the state rooms in a minute, which are just over there, and that's where the lords and I don't know who else, dukes, duchesses. I'll have to look it up. I'm coming, Jake. I'm going 360. Look at all the defensive weapons, spikes and pikes and lances and all sorts of spiky, stabby things. Axes and battle axes. I've known a few of them in my time as well. What a magical room.
1510. Wow. Love all the old wooden bits of the castle. You really can see how Lord Armstrong, or the first Lord Armstrong, is one of the richest people in all of Europe. Through the stone corridors. Just room after room. And at the moment, actually, they've got it set up for fairy tales and myths and legends, so that's why you have so many pixies and elves and everything else. Look. side to look we've got tapestry on one side and pictures of battles on the other side look. Well, I'm going to the older part of the castle now taking a step back in time somewhat So all of these are for sale, that's 1180, there's one back there for 160, so there's all sorts of different prices from a couple of hundred quid up to a couple of thousand I think, but wonderful, 3,400 pounds. That's pretty wonderful isn't it, that one, I like some of these. Look at the colours of the sky, man. Wow, it's certainly a popular uh, topic for artists, but there's the Lindisfarne Priory on Hurry Island that the Vikings ransacked. I believe once this exhibition's finished and the next uh, the, the fairy tale Christmas thing's finished, it's going to be back to uh, displays for the Last Kingdom. They're going to have loads of different costumes and everything from that. Look at that! 
Some beautiful stuff here. Wow. I'm getting old, honestly. If if I had the spare money, I could buy a few of these. And the reason you keep seeing these, look, the, the puffins, the as we look out, we can see the Farn Islands, and the, and the Farn Islands have uh, seals and puffins galore. And also, like the, the boxing hares, we saw a dead hare on the way here. And there, there is the sycamore tree that used to sit in Sycamore Gap before a local landowner got a little bit angry without all the people coming and decided to chop it down. Can you blame him? Probably not. Well, be your gift shop, right? So if you look up, there's a murder hole. So under siege defenders would have held arrows, stones and boiling water down from there. Look. Oh, okay. Okay, we're out here again. And to finish it off, a nice festive season sausage roll. Well, that's been Bamber Castle, and that's been my little family. You know, it seems very much the norm these days to almost slag off, or for English people to slag off England. I don't see Scottish people doing it so much, or Welsh, or, or Northern Irish about their own, their own countries. We seem to do it, I mean, I don't know why. We've always done it in the press. We build people up, we knock them down, and now it's with a flag. It's You've got one side sort of saying, they won't take my flag, you know. Uh, no one's trying to take your flag, mate. Nobody cares. Nobody's offended by the flag. So, what's wrong with being patriotic about your country and your flag? With that in mind, I've been reading a little bit of poetry, and who better to see you out with than Mr. Billy Shakespeare himself? This royal throne of kings, this sceptred isle, this earth of majesty, this seat of Mars, this other Eden, demi-paradise, this fortress built by nature for herself against infection and the hand of war, this happy breed of men, this little world, this precious stone set in the silver sea which serves it in the office of a wall, or as a moat defensive to a house against the envy of less happier lands, this blessed plot, this earth, this realm, this England.